Hi and welcome along to our last video in the set on um, cosmology and astrophysics. Exoplanets is where we finish. Um, one of those things that's been a, a huge, huge change in my lifetime. Um, when I was uh, in sixth form, you know, there were eight or nine planets in the solar system and that was it. We knew there were billions and billions of stars. We had no idea whether any of them had anything going around them, whether there are any planets outside the solar system. We now know that there are lots and lots and lots of solar systems and planets out there. And this little video is just to um, talk you through how we might know about them. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to imagine we're pointing our telescope at a star and we're making some measure of brightness of apparent magnitude against time. And we can imagine every time we look at the star, nowadays, of course, this would be automated. And that's one of the reasons why we've managed to find exoplanets is because we can do lots and lots of observations without people needing to go out every night and set up their telescopes. Um, constant brightness and then suddenly it's just a tiny, tiny drop in brightness and that reoccurs at regular time intervals. Now I'm going to show you this, that's not a very good regular tournament at all, uh, in a simulation in a moment. But basically what we're looking at here is what's called an eclipsing binary. So we can imagine that, um, well that's what it would be if it was two stars. So here's our star, here's our planet in orbit around the star. And if our observer is in the same plane as the orbit or thereabouts, there's going to be a moment where the planet is in front of the star. It blocks some of the light and we get a very, very small um, reduction in brightness. So one of the ways we can um, detect an exoplanet is looking for eclipsing. The other way of checking for an exoplanet is Doppler. And this is just exactly the same as um, what we described um, when we were looking at how we detect binary stars. The only difference here is that we're only going to see one line and the shifting of one line because our planet isn't going to have any lines. Um, we imagine we're pretty close to in the plane of the orbit. I think we're imagining we're not exactly in the plane of the orbit of the planet, because if it was, we would also get eclipsing. Um, so generally, I think we're talking about pretty substantial planets which have been discovered this way, things like the size of Jupiter, and generally much, much closer into the to the star than our, our, our Jupiter with a, with a fairly short time period. As with all binary systems, they're orbiting about their mutual centre of gravity. So... When the planet is receding, moving away to, towards us, just momentarily, that moment, um, the star is moving slowly toward, towards us. So if this has got 10 times more mass, it's moving towards us it, um, just a tenth of the velocity. However, that's just enough, because we're very sensitive to um, these Doppler measurements, just to, enough to shift the spectra of the star. So again, what we would see is... Um, some kind of absorption line in our spectra. When it's going across our line of sight, it's in the normal place. Um, then the star moves towards us and it's moving towards us. If you make this the red end and the blue to blue end. Temporarily, the line is blue shifted. So it's not blue, it's still black, but it's in that goes into the blue part of the spectrum. So that's when the star's moving towards us. And then when it's moving away from us, it goes back into the red. And the time it takes to go from its peak um, blue shift through no shift, red shift, no shift and back to its peak blue shift is one period of the orbit. So that's giving us some, uh, some information about those orbits. We'll have a look now at um, exactly the same things in some uh, simulations and some animations. Let's have a quick look at this software simulation and then we can have a understand a bit more detail exactly what's going on with the eclipsing method. So we imagine that we're the observer. We see a star and then the little redder object is a planet. I've actually 
actually this is designed for showing a binary star system so i've had to make that star very small and dim so it's not producing any light and you can see as an observer i mean this is in reality what's happening all the observer on earth sees is they're plotting a graph against time of how bright the star is and we're seeing that it's of constant brightness and then just periodically we get this dimming as the planet moves across its discs uh, that's the eclipse and because the planet is absorbing some of the light we get this short tiny drop in brightness but that gives us information um, about the orbit the other method we've talked about is the um, doppler method um, let's just get that going uh, so we've got a large massive planet orbiting you can see the period of the orbit um, is simulated as 10 days compare that to the earth 365 days but the really big planets like this one um, around the earth all the gas giants have got um, orbits of tens and tens of years so this is quite an extreme solar system from our point of view and the way, one of the reasons i've made it so extreme is i want you to be able to see this wobble you should be able to visualize that they're moving around their mutual center of gravity and as a result of that you've got this wobble and we can detect that wobble um, by Doppler so if I just pause there here we've got the planet receding it's moving away from us and because they're rotating around their mutual center of gravity that means that the star is coming towards us if it's coming towards us um, then we'll get blue shift and all the absorption lines will have a slightly shorter wavelength than we might expect move the animation on a bit we get to here here the planet's coming towards us so the star's moving away you can see that over here in the graph as well so all the absorption lines will now be red shifted and we know um, that this the star is moving away from us so we've got two sources of information here we've got the changes in velocity and we've got an orbital period so that will allow us to construct more information about the orbit and the planet than simply the um, eclipsing method so that's it for all the content for a2 physics as far as i'm aware um, just finish off there with exoplanets a couple of methods of detecting planets so it just serves to me to say um, goodbye and whatever your future holds i hope it goes well for you um, I don't think any of us could have imagined that we'd be saying goodbye uh, to the students in a video, um, but there it is. Maybe there'll be an arrangement at some point in the future when things settle back to normal for us to um, actually say properly goodbye. But, you know, to all of you, um, it's been great knowing you and working with you. And, um, yeah, I hope we all find a way forward. Thank you very much.